Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be doing an oil change on my 2011 Toyota Corolla. I'll be using this Walmart SuperTech SAE 0W20. This is, you know, it costs $19 at Walmart for 5 quart. The non high mileage one costs $18, so it's a dollar more, which is pretty good. And that's in, we're in uh, August 2024. And then I just bought they had Toyota filters at Walmart as well. That was a little more expensive. It's like seven bucks versus you can get the other ones that are a little bit cheaper, like four bucks. But I sprung for that. And then I always have a breaker bar to get the oil pan bolts off with a 14 millimeter. You want a new gasket for your oil pan bolt. Which I got a pack of these on Amazon and then a funnel. I think that's everything I need. I got the car lifted up. I drove it up on these basically uh, ramps here. I always put a tarp underneath in case I spill a bunch of oil. And then I have, I don't know if you can see it, let me get the light. Oil pan, catch pan down there. So let's get this oil pan bolt off and see how the oil looks. All right guys, so we're underneath the car here. And your oil pan's located underneath the passenger side. Yeah, this can sometimes be a difficult bolt to get off. This bolt, kind of right there. Especially the, if you've had it changed previously at a dealership or a shop, they torque these on pretty good. See, I did mine last time, so it wasn't too hard. But the first time I did it, I did it, I didn't have a breaker bar. And it's pretty difficult to get off. So before I do this, I also make sure to run my car for just a little bit to heat it up. That way any contaminants get kind of dissolved in the oil and they come out when you do your change. So I like to try and do this without getting oil on my hand. And I also leave the oil cap on so it doesn't come out too fast. So we'll let that drain out. As you can see, the oil is pretty dirty. And you'll see that my gasket stayed on. Let me see if I can get you a good view here. This little gasket piece stayed on right there. So I'll have to, usually I have to get like a little screwdriver and kind of tap that off. You don't want to put two gaskets on because that'll for sure make you have an oil leak once you put it on. So make sure you get that gasket off before. So I'm going to let this drain. Again, leave your oil cap on on the on the engine or else this will come out really fast and spray everywhere. And the one time I did that, it overflowed this thing and got all over my garage floor. And so once it's slowed down, you can take that cap off and then we'll work on getting our oil filter off, which you, you do have to get a separate oil filter wrench for, which I'll show you that. All right, so most of the oil has dripped out. So it's time to put this plug back in. Again, I, I removed the old gasket off there. Usually I just have to tap on it with a screwdriver and a hammer. And there it goes, pops right off. So the next phase is you get a little bit of oil from your pan. And you just lube up your old gasket so that it doesn't leak. It sticks on there nicely. And then you put your drain bolt back on. Then you start off by hand tightening it. And then I just snug it up just a little bit. Again, you don't need to over torque this. One turn, two turns. And then that should be snug enough. Don't need it to be on there that tight. So now we'll move on to our oil filter. Let me switch out. So we make sure to move over our catch basin. Let me see how well we can see the oil filter here. And that's the oil filter up there. I'll show it to you guys in a second here. 
Let me get my oil filter. This is just a common oil filter wrench you can get on Amazon. I'll put a link to it down below, as well as some of the other tools I like to use. And again, you just line it up with the grooves on your oil filter. And it should come off nicely. Let's see if I can get it on there first. Sorry about the angle here, guys. May need to switch to just a smaller wrench here. Let me go grab one, I'll be right back. All right, so I got my smaller wrench on there. Fortunately, this wrench doesn't have a ratcheting function. It's gonna take me a little bit longer. We will slowly get this off here. And we will put our new filter on. This will start leaking here in a second. And then I'll, usually I let it leak before I get it fully off. There's a lot of threads on this thing, if I remember correctly. So this will take a second. Get this housing off of here. And usually the filter thing, filter, wrench sticks on there. Now I can do it by hand. You can see that old oil lo leaking out. It's a good time to make sure your catch basin's centered appropriately because when you take it out it'll just keep becoming more and more. If you wanted to do that a little bit slower with less mess. That wouldn't be a bad idea either. So let me get my new filter and I'll show you how to put it in. All right guys, we're back on the workbench here. I'm just gonna show you the old filter. Super dirty. This has been in there about a year and about 5,000 miles. So definitely glad we're changing it. You can see on the paper towel, oil is pretty burnt compared to the new oil, which is basically an amber yellow color. Here's our new filter. Here's our old filter housing. Comes with a new gasket, new filter. So what we'll do first, take off the old gasket. You can use a pick. Let's see if I can get it off my fingernails maybe. Yep. Comes right off. Open up our new one. We will cover it and oil so that it sticks on there nicely. Get this gasket nice and covered. And then we just gotta make sure we get it into the slot without tearing it. There's a nice little slot here on the bottom underneath the threads. Good. Put our new filter back in there. Kind of is like spring loaded. This is good to go back on the car. Again, this gets really stuck on here. And usually I have to drop it on the concrete to get it off or tap it with a rubber mallet. So let's see, did I already get it kind of stuck? You can kind of put it on there loosely and hope for the best because it, it is kind of difficult to get that off when you're screwing it back on. So let's get back under the car and screw this on. All right, so there's an empty hole where our filter needs to go. We're just gonna twist this bad boy back in there. Might do it without the cover on it first. Again, this is a righty-tighty operation. 
You know, but at this angle, it's a little bit hard to get. These threads started. Let's see how we're doing. Okay, there it goes. So usually, you know, it starts to get tough right around this point. Turn it to make sure you see those threads there. You can put your wrench on it. And we will slowly get this back in there. And this, there's a kind of a little click you get once you've tightened it all the way up. Then you can feel the gasket starting to seal in. You start to hear that noise. I think we got it all the way. Well, no click here. Let me tap it. I'm gonna have to tap it to get this wrench off here. If I can, let's see. There it goes. And then you just make sure you're flush. There, we didn't really get much of a click on our wrench this time. That's okay because we are flush with the oil and we will fill it up and we'll see if anything leaks out. All right, so we're ready to fill up oil. I've already got mine pre-measured. You can kind of see there. I use the same bottle. I filled it up with a larger bag of oil that I buy at Walmart. But this is, I know where the 4.4 quarts line is. It's a five quart total and this engine Doing this procedure takes 4.4 quarts when you fill it up and change the filter. If it's a dry fill, like it's never been filled before, then it's 4.7. If you don't change the filter, I think it's like 4.1 or 4.2. So let's fill this up. I got my filter here, or my, no, my, my funnel. You can see the nice kind of clean oil coming out. Don't need to go too fast or it'll spill. We're just going to dump this whole container in there. And then we'll take it around the block, measure it, make sure on an even surface to make sure we got enough in there. Again, I'd recommend doing this you know, every six, six months or 3,000 miles, whichever comes second usually. You know, if it's been a year and you still haven't done 3,000 miles, then maybe consider doing it. Just because every time you start your car, you do get a little bit of gasoline in this oil. So my oil smells like gas today and it's fairly dirty. Just because I waited a tad to, I didn't realize I'd already made it to 5,000 miles. I thought it was less than that. I thought it was at just around 3,000. So drove a little more than I thought. And again, the first time you do this, I think the hardest thing is just going to be getting that oil pan bolt off because it's usually been torqued on there by somebody who you paid to do it before you. Let's go ahead and empty out this bottle. And that should be it. I would leave your oil pan underneath just in case anything isn't tight enough on your first try. Make sure you put your oil cap on. Okay, we got just about everything out of here. I've had pretty good luck with this Super Tech oil from Walmart. It is Ilsax GF6A rated which is the highest rating you can get and which most oils you find at your local auto store are all right so let me start this up drive around and we'll check the level all right so drove around the block let it sit for about 20 minutes 
see where we're at here. Looks pretty good. It looks like we're right on the fill line there. Probably can't see it right on the full dot, the second dot there. So pretty happy with that. Again, guys, thanks for watching. If you got any questions, put them in the comments below. Hope this guy's helps you out. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, you enjoy seeing this kind of content. If you have a Toyota Corolla, I do videos on them all the time because it's my main driving, driving vehicle. Make sure to subscribe. I'll catch y'all next time.